region. Okay? And I count here the number of critical points. I do that in rather large detail. For the moment, the formula is only written here for the minima. So this is the number of critical points of index zero, that is the number of local minima, whose value is below, below u, and who are in this band, right? So this thing has a certain, this limit exists, and it is given by a function which we will call, uh, okay, which will be the inf of another function, inf of w smaller than z, of an f of u and w. So we have an explicit expression for this. And let me try to explain how, so the, the explicit expression for f is horrendous. But let me try to explain what it, how, where it comes from. So of course we do the same thing. Now remember our function, phi, is our old Gaussian function which is centered and we have added now a deterministic function and so now the function is not centered. So, but I can still start with the same, in the same way. If I want to compute this thing, I can apply Katz Rice formula. And so this, with critical zero here, uz, I just have to do the same thing, except here instead of integrating on, on the sphere, I integrate on this, uh, region, let me call it A sub Z. And I have to compute the same thing, except that here, in this density, which was the density of the, remember, maybe I didn't remember do that, this was the density of the distribution of the, Hessian, of the gradient, right? So now this gradient before was so it's a Gaussian variable, but before it was a centered Gaussian variable. Now it's a centered Gaussian variable. It's a non-centered Gaussian variable, and its mean is given by the spike. So the spike is hidden in this thing, but otherwise we can start with the same computation. So if you start with the same computation, you have to compute here, again, the distribution of this Hessian, okay? And now, instead of being a GOE, What you find is that this Hessian is the law of a spike GOE. As I was describing before. So through Katz Rice formula, you reduce this thing to the case of the usual PCA, right? the usual BBP transition. Okay? And so, exactly as before, when we were uh, using the large, so because of that, I won't be too precise. Now using the large deviation principle given by Milan Maida for the spiked PCA, for the spiked, I'm sorry, so it's not called spiked, but uh, modified Wigner ensemble, that's how it's called, but it's the same thing. The, the, the vocabulary in the random matrix word is modified GOE. For the modified GOE, then one can find, prove the theorem and find this function, the rate function which is given over there which I call capital F of U and W. Okay, so that's the strategy, and which proved that in fact in the end this question of a, a random field reduces to the question of the spike PCA, except that the, um, now, this, okay, I'm not sure, Ofer, where is Ofer? Like what? Five, 10, 15, great. So then 15, I can give you a formula. But maybe before, maybe give you, I hesitate giving the formula because it was full of board, but 
Before doing that, let me explain what we can get from this formula. So first, this is very preliminary because we here have only the first moment. So in order to be more sure about what this means, we will need the, the same thing that Subak did when there was no spike and being able to understand the second moment. But what do we see at the level of the first moment? So, um, but, so before explaining that, let me explain what, the, what you can do. So instead of doing the complexity here, what if we study this problem, instead of doing this problem at zero temperature, we do that at positive temperature. That is like a physicist. So we could again introduce the, the Gibbs measure as before, the same one, except my function is now has changed. It has a, a spike here. And the free energy. So you may want to understand the limit of log Zn over n. Try to understand this, right? which is now a function of the spike, n of p. So that, what you want to do if you, if you want to do that uh, as a physicist, and then maybe let the temperature go to zero. So this is done in a work by uh, myself and uh, Giulio Biroli and Chiara Camarotta. And let me explain what happens. So, and maybe how you do that, that's not a very, I mean, if you look at it like this, it's not such a hard problem from a, the point of view of physics. What you have to do is you, you first uh, start with the usual spin glass, no spike, but instead of doing it on the, on the whole sphere, you do it on one parallel, right? Just one. So again, here you have, that's not a, such a hard problem, because in fact, this is exactly equivalent to studying the spin glass model with a magnetic field. By right? Lejeune, you transform, it's the same thing. Right? Fixing the coordinate or fixing the field. So by Lejeune, you transform, you can understand everything that happens for this problem on a given thing from what you know for uh, uh, the spin glass model in a field. And what do you know there? What do you obtain? For this question, you have the following thing. When you look at when your parallel is on, on the equator, then at low temperature, you have a one RSB phase. You have this huge complexity. But when your parallel becomes smaller and smaller because you come closer to the North Pole, at some point, just for a question of volume, you lose this one replica symmetry breaking. You lose the complexity because your thing becomes too small. And so above a certain parallel, you will have, at zero temperature, you will have replica symmetry. Okay, so that's an easy thing. Once you have this, now you want to add this function, which is just a function of this coordinate. So it's not too hard, you can work, and then you can prove that, uh, in this context, here's what happens. I, I say that in words. So, you, of course, on the equator, you have this roughness and this very large, because this is very large, you have this very large number of local minima, as was described before. On the equator here, you don't feel the, the, the spike at all. So here it's a pure, a usual p-spin model, and it's rough and complex as before. One RSB, if you want, at low temperature. But then, if, when you begin, so if you have no spike, of course, this dominates. But when you begin to increase the spike, what you will see for a while, the equator will still dominate the Gibbs measure, but at a certain moment, the Gibbs, there will be a, a, a parallel here, above here, which will dominate this one. So the Gibbs measure will be concentrated here instead of here, which is good news again for the question we have, which means the Gibbs measure feels the spike, right? So here you already have recovered a, par a part of the signal. And in fact, and this is rough. Again, it's one RSB. 
You have an exponentially large number of local minima on this thing, if you want. And if you increase even more the spike, then this thing will come much closer to the, to the North Pole, and it will be, so here it will be one RSB, and if you increase even more the spike, it will be replica symmetry, symmetric here, which means essentially non-complex near the North Pole. So that's the approach through, uh, let's say, the physics approach, the Gibbs measure approach. But now you can look at temperature zero directly and look at this function. And you find, of course, the same. You can find the equivalent of this statement. So now I cannot escape giving you the function. So this, uh, and this, with that, I will. So one half of log of one minus z plus one half of log. Or maybe I should put the first this one because this is always there. It's minus z minus one over two p alpha square p square z to the two p minus one plus one half plus I'm sorry minus a function g of alpha eta of z square root of p over 2p minus 1 u plus alpha z to the p. And here eta of z is just uh, p square root of p, p minus 1 over 2, z to the p minus 2. And the function g, so at this point, of course, and g of, uh, let's say, theta and v. So at this point, this function, th this part, are not very interesting thing. The rate function, the large deviation for the spiked model is, of course, hidden in this g, which is given now. So it's the function I call L0 plus p minus 2 over 2p v square if v is smaller than negative square root of 2. Uh, yeah, here my normalization is such that it's, the 2 has become a square root of 2. And that is if, OK, if that, and is um, and a 0 of minus v plus p minus 2 over 2p times square root of 2 square, if v is larger than some negative square root of 2. That is if, this is if theta is, small, theta is smaller than 1 over square root of 2. That is, you don't feel the spike. And if theta is larger than square root of 2, then, uh, okay, the function is, the, you, you replace, essentially, it's more complicated, but replace L0 by what I call L uh, theta before, the rate function given by uh, Maida plus other things. I don't want to get too much into that. This is really painful. So let me explain. So you have an explicit formula, and now you can ask yourself the same question, and you find the same thing, that is, if, or at least I hope we find the same thing, if uh, we have to check that the thresholds are the same also. So if the spike is smaller than a certain alpha 1, then, the, uh, then essentially the, uh, so the, the local minima, you have an exponentially large number of local minima on the, on the equator and nothing else. If alpha is between alpha one, a certain alpha 1 and a certain alpha 2, then you have this phase that I was describing. That is, you have an exponentially large number of local minima on the equator, but you have even more, I mean, deep local, I mean, local minima on this, uh, on a certain parallel here, and this height depends on the alpha. So in this thing, the model is complex, exponentially complex, here too. Here, the local minima are essentially not related to the spike. 
So here, most of the local minima are on the equator. And when alpha is larger than alpha 2, then the model is not complex. That is, this function, the, com the, the, the complexity function that I call f was uh, 0. I mean, this inf of f was, was 0. So then this, this doesn't really tell you that you have a, a unique minimum, but it's compatible with the idea that you have one unique minimum very close to the, uh, to the, uh, to the North Pole. And this regime, uh, in, in this regime, it will be clear that uh, solving the maximum likelihood principle uh, uh, estimator will be simple. So here it's clear, in this regime, it's clear that you can construct a consistent uh, estimator because your maximum likelihood estimator will converge to the North Pole. Whereas in this regime, whatever you do, you will not find the, the North Pole. In this regime, what this tells you, and this, so this becomes interesting, and it will stop with that. This regime here, the alpha 1 and alpha 2, correspond to something which is really important in computer science and I mean, this kind of statistics, which is the computational statistical gap. So this happens in other models, for instance, random constraint satisfaction problems, where you have two different thresholds. One at which, so to come back to what I was saying at the beginning, one at which you can do detection, and one at which you can do recovery, right, which are so here, in this regime, when alpha is, the spike in, is there, for, what this will tell you, pro, I mean, not really now because we only con control the first moment, but what this indicates is that the, the, the information theory problem is, is solvable. You can find uh, something correlated with the, with the, with the spike, but the, but the algorithmic aspect of it how do you find it? Right? This is uh, way more difficult. And the reason is the following. So in this regime, your, your Gibbs measure, your minima, the important minima are here. But if you start from a random, so you try to find this North Pole. You, st you start from a random point, which naturally, when you take a random point on the sphere, it will be on the equator, right? Because the equator has, has all the mass. But now, you, whatever you try to apply as an algorithm to find your minimum or maximum, which will be here, first you have to escape this very large equator, which first it's difficult entropically because the equator is, is big, but also it's difficult because in the equator you still have all these rough landscape. So escaping that is very long. And, and for the moment, in fact, there, there is a conjecture about what, how much time it takes to go from here to there, but that's, uh, that's uh, just a conjecture. But there is one context in which we can do something, which is the following. Here I was asking the hardest possible question in statistics, which is, I give you one instance of something plus noise, and I ask you, can you find the something? Now, if you are not that uh, hung, I mean, difficult, you could ask, you could say, instead, so typically these things are images. Instead of giving one instance, I give you k instance, right? So I, I give you time to learn a bit. k instance in which, of course, the, the, the spike will be the same. Yeah, but, but, may, but the, the, the realization of the noise may be different, right? So you have always the same n, but you have you know, now k instances, and you try to find. So if you do that, then there are natural algorithms to do that, which are, for instance, stochastic gradient descent. And when k is large enough, so this is also a work with uh, the same uh, co-authors here, Giulio uh, Biroli and Chiara Camarota, and uh, no, I'm sorry. In fact, I misspelled her name. It's Chiara, but it's Camarota. Um, and there, in this context, when you apply uh, stochastic gradient descent, you can see really what happens. If you look, so let me say that in words because it's a long paper. If you look, so you start from the equator and you follow the gradient given by this uh, function phi for every new instance that I give you, and I give you k instances. So of course you have to, 
decide what is the time, the length of your time step, etc. But when you do that properly, what you see, if you look at the distance from your point to the spike, the thing you want to find, then when k is large, of course you have to say how large, what you find is that this distance behave, converges in fact to a diffusion, it's a dimension one thing, it converges to a diffusion process in one dimension, which is, which is in a potential which has this shape. This is zero, this is one zero correspond to overlap zero with the, the North Pole, that is to being on the equator, one corresponds to being on the North Pole, and it has a, 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 it's like a diffusion in a potential which is like this. So which means that you have, in order to escape the equator, you have to, to climb a, a barrier, which takes a lot of time. But then in the end, you will end up here. And of course, this coordinate here correspond to this z, right? So you will end up essentially there. But first, you have to do that. And the time to do that, of course, depends on um, how many, uh, depends on k, how many instances you've been shown. Right? But, but in some sense, this, I mean, this is nice, but it's cheating a bit because we are, the problem that uh, data scientists, statisticians want really to solve is this one. I give you one instance, find the spike. Okay. Yes, of course, the, the, uh, when k is, becomes very large, this z goes to, this, this thing goes to 1. But even if it doesn't go to 1, <coughs> you keep re, if you keep resampling and restarting, you'll end up at different points on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah but you need, you need a, a lot to do that uh, before, you, before you can know where the uh, center is. So, yeah, the, the reason it's so hard, of course, to escape the uh, equator, of course, here's what uh, the practitioners would say. They would say, for instance, we can do this with a hot start. That is, you have very vague information that the, north, the point you're looking at is inside this region. So if you start with a hot start, that means if you start here, then of course you go, right? But in general, you don't know, of course, that. And so why is it hard to escape this? It's because, of course, here, the, 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 the drift, if you know, the gradient of your function in this direction is very small because if you call x1 this coordinate, the function is x1 to the p. So when you compute the gradient, it's very, it's, it's, it's very much zero at x1 equals zero. Not only it, but it's second derivative too. And so it's extremely hard to use this gradient to escape this. Yes, but I haven't, okay, I can answer yes to your question. That is, yes, we can. <laughs> but, uh, but in fact, we can in the two, you know, either uh, on the, we can compute these things uh, on the Gibbs measure, if you want, on the physics approach and let the temperature go to zero. We can compute them directly with the complexity, the geometric approach. Uh, somebody has to work to prove that they are the same, but they should be. I'm sorry, I didn't. Yeah, yeah, so um, th this can be done too. This is extremely difficult. So in the case where you have no spike uh, for the, just a polynomial, so that's the first step in this direction has been taken by, uh, by uh, Eliran, who computed the second moment and then could prove some form of concentration right, ar around the mean, as I explained. Uh, you... And this was enough, in fact, for him to then understand what was happening. This was an information about zero temperature, and he could climb to higher temperature. Still very low, but higher temperature. Um, now, do, for instance, understanding the fluctuations, would, that would be serious. But, but the, there are interesting information that you can get there at the level of convergence of processes. 
Elian, Subag, and Ofer Zaytouni have, for instance, looked at the following question. In the case where there's no spike, you know what the minimum should be. It should be this, what I call this negative E0, properly rescale. But now you could ask, what is really, so that's a deterministic number. What is the process of points which are near the minimum? And so that's what they found, and they found that it was, because the second moment method worked here nicely, they could find that it was a gumball process. So exactly as if this, even though those variables on the sphere are very correlated, their extreme values are the same as for Gaussian uncorrelated. They are a gumball process whose intensity they, can, they could compute. So, so some of these problems are solvable. For instance, what I just said here with respect to the spiked model, what is the behavior of the landscape on this thing, for instance, this is, I don't know, but probably doable if somebody is as courageous as Elirand and Ophir were. <laughs>